Anyway, that was, thank you for sending me that video, the INFP Absolutely. video. INFP, I introverted, am. intuitive, feeling, feeling perceiving. perceiving. Yeah, because after many talks of you and I exploring our different personality traits based on the Meyer Briggs test, mm -hmm. um, I think we've come to a consensus. And by we, I mean you and me, mm -hmm. and maybe a couple of friends and family members who I'm can kind of vouch for it. Yeah, bring them in and see, oh, do you think this is true? Do you think that's true? Yeah. INFP. So I think I'm very much an intuitive. Uh, uh, no, introverted, intuitive, feeling, perceiving, right? And we just, uh, I was just watching a video that Jay sent me uh, explaining the different personality traits with the INFP. And I think it's pretty spot on. Strengths and weaknesses all. It's, it's very like, accurate. It's Scary very accurate. accurate. Yeah. It's, uh, what was it? Even, the, even like the, the weaknesses, even though you're not weak in those points, but you see them still as things that you have to work on. There's still things that I have to manage. So the weaknesses of the INFP is that it tends to be reserved, shy, um, reticent, meaning a little, you know, maybe you may be present, but at the same time not really involved. You seem a little distant. I totally identify with those things. I don't think I'm very easy to get along with. Um, I, th I think people think I'm nice, but it takes a lot to get close with me. And I don't, let, I don't necessarily let people in very easily too. Now I've learned to project a very warm feeling to people, not in a sociopathic kind of way, but like <laughs> I've learned to just to not feel like uh, I think it comes from a, a, a desire to be cautious because INFPs tend to be very aware of people's emotions and very empathetic, uh, and on some level it almost kind of paralyzes you in a way because you're like, okay, with all this information now, what do I do? You kind of get like an analysis paralysis from it. But I've just learned to be like, okay, well, I just, even if someone doesn't like it, I'm gonna, I have to focus on what I want to do as opposed to trying to accommodate, overly accommodate people's feelings. And I, as I discussed with you yesterday, that impulse to overly accommodate um, is, can be debilitating sometimes. And I can lose myself easily by wanting very hard to please and make sure everyone's feeling okay. But by doing so, I am putting my own wants and desires on the shelf. So I have to be very careful about not doing that. And also about the reservedness, I've just learned to just say what's on my mind and, and go out and, and do things in front of people, even if that exposes me to failure or ridicule. I'm just, I just learned that those are fleeting. This too shall pass. So I've, I've, I've gotten really good at just not weighing myself down with my own. That my own version of overthinking, mm -hmm. even though it's a feely personality, but um, it's like INFPs can also get stuck in their thoughts too. Sure. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I, I thought that. Thank was Thank you fun. for participating. I feel this is very important. <laughs> I I get a medal for showing up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always I up. always get those perfect attendance awards. Oh, okay. And you can't take that away from me. I won't don't, take don't that make, don't make me feel bad just because no. I'm punctual and I show up. No, I'm very grateful. You know what? A lot of people don't do that nowadays. It's very valuable to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you yes. were talking, you and I were talking yesterday and uh, uh, you kept saying this one thing. You kept saying like, I'm sorry, I know it sounds insensitive, but. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. I've been practicing this for two days. How's it, yeah, and practicing realized, what? Pra explain. Practicing saying my thoughts like uh, saying, this is not just thoughts. This is how my mind works. Yes. Is what I'm trying to get out. You're expressing the thoughts that you also um, externalizing the thought patterns that arise right. when you hear certain things, and they and they're not always positive. They're oftentimes inconsiderate. <laughs> to say the least. They're oftentimes. Insensitive. Insensitive, inconsiderate, absolutely. I just, I'm learning about myself. Or, I didn't know. Or, I did not know that I was an inconsiderate, insensitive person, but now I know. You see how important this is. <laughs> but so that's why you're doing this. Yes. By saying what's actually in your mind as opposed to keeping it to yourself. Now you're getting feedback. Yes. And feedback is important for growth, right? Right, absolutely. Right. You can sing in the shower all you want, but if you don't have an audience to hear you, you don't know if the if your song is any good. Yeah. So how is your song? So now I know how is your song so now I know that my internal dialogue needs work. 
And how intuitive do you know, word. How do you know that? Based on the reactions that you're getting? Uh, or yes. by even just by hearing, by virtue of just hearing it. Now that instead of it just being in your head, now you're actually hearing the words and the tone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, all of it. Um, yeah, these are thoughts that I've never put words to. They're just in my head, so they I just see them as like pictures. Maybe I'm not sure what they are. I don't see words, right? So when they come out, I see the words. You see the words, and you, it's too late. <laughs> okay. You can't. Oh, you can't come back. Wait. Words. Word. Um, I didn't mean. But now I also see like how wise I've been up to now. Like really just taking the time to think things through. This is not the appropriate thing to say. <laughs> right? Like I how know you, how inherently so I you, know that. So how, how wise you mean in, in not saying these things? You're like, right. oh, I probably shouldn't have shared these and I'm glad that I didn't before. Yes. But now. I, I often have that thought. Right? But, but I never know for sure. <laughs> I never know for sure, but now I know. Now this is confirmation. See? See how it works? I see, I see there's method in the madness. Yes. 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 I mean, you could say it's insensitive. I, I spun it a different way when I was talking to you yesterday. Yeah, I yeah, said, yeah. I said, maybe you're just not as attached or uh, you're not as attached to some people are. Sure. Yeah. And I think it's both. Like, obviously, I don't want to be detached. I, right. want, I want some sort of attachment to my friends, to my, you know, we have to have some sort of bond. Some, some meeting, right. some, connect, some connecting point. Right. Uh, but apparently, from what I learned, the ISTP, which is an introverted sensor thinker, uh, perceiver, perceiver. Yeah. and uh, but from my research, and I've been researching, like I said, for two, three solid days now. Uh, that means you're an expert in internet terms. I mean, <laughs> pretty much. You're a professional at this pretty point. Pretty much. You're pretty an armchair That's, professional. No, I feel like the more I learn, like the more I realize, like, oh man, this, this goes really deep. Yeah. Uh, and, but the normal traits. So obviously you could be a little bit more extroverted, a little bit more introverted, but overall these traits yeah. is is a person who who is overall quiet because he's taking the time to think things through. Right. And when he does speak, he's usually thought about it enough to where it sounds concise enough. Um, and that sounds like me. That sounds like what I would do. Uh, and now even more so with like, as I'm building my confidence and it's like, okay, now I know what to say. And this, this bringing out, like, I understand, I, I already know, like just recently, that by me saying these extroverted feeling things out loud, that's not the way to express my extroverted feeling. But this is me understanding how to go about expressing it in a way where it is acceptable to... So how do you, how do you plan on refining this, just... Like what's your now that you're seeing the results, the right. feedback I've gotten, actually saying I've gotten two solid feedback so far and I feel like I'm gonna process this. Oh, which is what? And it, it, like yesterday I tried it with you and I was like fumbling through my words. I was like, wait a minute, this is getting this is getting construed the wrong way. Let me reel it back in and I never find myself in this position, you see? I never put myself in that position. <laughs> so for you're me, lucky, to, for me, put, that I love you, for so. me to put myself in a position where I'm fumbling for words is super uncomfortable for me. So I'm gonna find a way to communicate <laughs> more effectively. <laughs> like it's just my setting. I will find a way. I because I want to. Yes. Right, and I'm determined. Uh -huh. And so I have to. I believe I have. I have to do more research, but I believe I have to get more in tune with my introverted intuition. That's my second weak point. Mm -hmm. Not just the extroverted feeling, but <laughs> which is, I'm just tr saying like what I think about your feelings. Extroverted feeling is just being able to express your feelings, right? Right. That's not necessarily, I mean, that's a version of extroverted feeling, but I'm not doing it like an extroverted feeler would. would I'm doing it, do it yeah. right? I'm, you're, I'm you're like kind of imitating it or I'm not, I don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to like filter it out, right? It's messy. Uh, <laughs> That's why I need to, the introverted intuition is, I'm also not that comfortable with, is I'm more comfortable with thinking, and, you know, just thinking, thinking, thinking is my yeah. super, I do it by nature, like I'll wait, I'm, I like to think things through. Right. Um, which which I'm not for. Yeah. Yeah. You know, once you realize you're good at something and you're not just lost in your thoughts, it's actually a really cool thing. Yes. Um, which reminds me of like a, a DMT experience I had. Uh, which I've been 
processing for a couple years now. I haven't done it since then. Uh, but I, I took this crazy rip of DMT and and I lay back and and it's wild, right? If you've ever done DMT, it's just it just absorbs you into that dimension. And one of the things that I saw of the many things is this, remember the Muppets? Like the, the mother figure where you just saw her from the legs down? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I saw something like that, like a, like a mechanical version of that. And like, you know, I just see the legs down, but, but she's, I can see her arms reaching out, like mechanical robot arms, and she's taking things apart and putting things back together. Interesting. And she's doing it for me, right? Yeah. Like she's showing me, like, here's, and it's everything. It's particles, it's, it's fractional takes apart statues, chairs, mm -hmm. cars, the world essentially. Um, so fast forward to now, I'm learning this, and the ISTP, that personality, they call them the mechanic. Um, that They like tinkering with things, but, but I don't like tinkering with things. I'm not, I don't like messing with cars, I don't like taking, right? But I do like taking apart humanity. I do like taking I apart the universe. I would say you do tinker, just not like in a, this purely physical mechanical sense. Right. I, I do see that, in I see that sense, in the businesses that you're involved in. I do apply it in my You do tinker, you do te like split tests, you do yeah. try different things, you do add-ons, you This is true. You are willing to adapt to new features. That is in a way tinkering. Absolutely. Yeah. But a, a lot of a lot of the tinkering I do in my head as opposed to actually mechanically doing things. Sure. And then I will bring I will do some tinkering in the real because I do feel comfortable as a sensory thing. I do feel comfortable bringing my ideas and tinkering with them in real life. So I, I feel like like that's what now I've pieced it together with that DMT experience he was trying to show me is like how my brain works. Like right. I can take things apart and put them back together. I can take things apart and put it back together and it looks completely different than when it started. And that's how that's why it's important for me to practice talking because to me I'm like I'm like deconstructing the way that I work like I'm how do you say it? like working backwards like seeing yeah. seeing how I work and um, but now it's fascinating to me because now I'm doing it on purpose as to before it was just like happening and I didn't really know what was happening it was very empowering which is why I wanted to share it cuz here at our story, we're all about empowerment. Safe, in a safe space. Yes. Uh, yeah, I was, I will admit, I was taken aback by certain types of expressions, but then I realized what you were trying to do, and I'm like, I'm not going to discourage this. <laughs> 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 I want to see how far he's going to go. <laughs> because inherent also in my personality is an openness. It may, I'm, I may be a little, a little bit taken aback just because I'm a naturally observant person, but at the same time, I'm not one to, as long as you're not hurt, like really truly hurting anyone, uh, I'm very open to, to watching people's processes unfold. Because there's an inherent curiosity in me to be like, all right, what's gonna happen? <laughs> you wanna see how I work too. I do, I really do. I'm very interested to see um, people's growth. I also love seeing people fail. Not for a, a purely egotistical reason of, haha, you fell on your face and that's hilarious, though it is, mm -hmm. but I also like to see how people react to failure. Yeah, because that's, I, that I feel like that's some of the truest evidence of, of a person's character, is how they react when things go horribly wrong. Mm -hmm. that's, when, that's when you really see like, are, how, how composed they are or how considerate they are. Because everyone makes allowance for anyone who is having a hard time being, you know, unpleasant or reticent or, you know, not just, or just not very nice to people when they're down. But those who can still be mindful in that in that mindset, and that's not even necessarily required. But if they're able to do that, that tells me a lot about that person. Mm. Yeah. So uh, me seeing you go through this path which has its, its, its bumps, you know? <laughs> it's not smooth sailing. But me seeing that and seeing what you're truly trying to achieve and like better yourself, yeah, I just My intent, that. I feel, is clear. Your intent is clear. And I know you, I know you very well at this point. So I, I, I definitely know that you don't say certain things just to hurt anyone or to just purely to be mean. Um, 
think you're really, you're in your way facing your demons. And that's what you call it, right? Yeah, and there's people that talk about these personality types, yeah. they refer to your weaknesses as demons. Yeah. So for instance, the FE, the extroverted feeling would be, they would call it demon FE. Mm -hmm. Your demon FE. And it's not something that you should fear or run away from. It's something that you should conquer. Yeah. Yeah. It should, it's, a, it's something to, to, if you don't have something to chase you, how do you know um, how, how to run toward this goal of, of bettering yourself? Yeah. So what's your demon? We spoke about this, but yeah. for the, the sake of our so audience out the there. The demon overall seems to be, I'm trying to be as positive as possible, right? Mm -hmm. My thinking throughout the day, I'm trying to be as positive as possible because it does affect day to day overall big picture things. I know that inherently. And so the practice of this demon FE is that I, I don't resonate when an extroverted feeler person, this is mostly a negative extroverted feeler person. Someone who's, exactly. which has nothing to do with their personality. Yeah. Like people are inherently negative or inherently positive, right? At, at some point they, they have a balance, but a lot of people tend to complain. Extroverted feelers, negative ones tend to complain about how they feel. Oh, complaining. Complainers. Complain. So I see that and I get annoyed. I don't like people who complain, especially what, extroverted feeling complaints are minor, I feel, minor complaints. Um, now, an extroverted positive feeler would challenge me the most, right? This is the person who really shows me what I'm not doing right in my life. So this person, I could run up my personality could potentially be, um, could potentially be like in, in what do you call it? Intimidated by this person. Mm. Intimidated. We have some in our group. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, so this intimidation could potentially make me run away. Right. However, you've learned to be. I've learned to be. To gravitate you know, toward it. To gravitate toward it. To use it for my benefit. Especially, here's the thing. Extroverted feelers love ISTPs. Like, like we, they really like the things that... Why is that? I, I do notice this in real life, yeah. but why is that, do you think? Um, it's tough to say. I think it has something to do with chemistry. Like, you like f extroverted feelers like the way introverted thinkers are. They like think the way they express themselves. They like the way... They, but they don't seem to like capture it for themselves. They're not trying to capture it for themselves. They just like it. Like they're gravitated to it. It seems what from my observations as of just recently. Mm. So how else do you think extroverted feelers in a positive sense, um, how do they make you grow? Like what is it that they're doing that makes you grow? Yeah, well, they're showing me what extroverted feeling means. Like they're expressing their feelings in a positive manner, they're taking action in their life. So they're modeling behavior that you know that you need to improve in yourself. Yes, and these are, these are I can see these are traits, like, oh, I can see that if I can learn what they're doing and apply it in, in to my world, it would be a positive outcome. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to piece these things together. I know what's good for me inherently. I think we all do inherently know what's good for us. Mm -hmm. We just have a hard time getting ourselves to take action. And that's why I feel like getting to understand these personalities and seeing th how they resonate with me in reality, I feel like, well, I'm able to s even more so see it from a third party point of view. Because I already feel like I am consciousness in charge of this machine. I'm detached as it is. I'm very machine-like. I get it's inhumane, but if you know me inherently, you, you know my heart, you know that I love humanity more than anything. I'm very... It's, You're machine-like in that you want to be efficient. I do want to be efficient. I feel you like... You want to be working easy, like all the parts of you working in tandem with each other. Yeah. And if so, there is something that is feeler of me is my, my want of overall harmony. That's what feelers really want more than anything is harmony. Yes. They just don't really know how to express it in an efficient manner is what I gather. And where have you gathered that? Have you gathered that from me? Uh, no, you're actually really good, really thoughtful. <laughs> I'm talking about... And I'm, I'm quite disciplined in my feeling, yeah. if one could understand that, yes. 
Yeah, but you're also not an extroverted feeler. You're an introverted feeler, oh, yeah. which is different. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I mean that. That's why I'm so fascinated. I know so little. I'm. So, it's such a small fraction I understand, but I see the, I see the possibilities of it. Like if we really do understand, like all of us, even. You know what else these uh, personality typers, they use the, the phrase tribe, like how this type reacts in a tribe setting. Mm -hmm. And so it just resonates, right? They're talking about demons, they're talking about tribe, like they're, they're speaking right they're to speaking me. They're speaking our language. <laughs> this, yeah. These are the terms that we use to describe ourselves and describe yeah. the people around us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you can see how I'm, my passion for this is growing immensely, I feel. Because I, you, you because you're on this path of learning about yourself, discovering yourself. And the 16 point personality Myers-Briggs test is all about understanding yourself yeah. and understanding what parts of you are already strong, what parts of you um, tend to need more development and it helps you understand other people. And through understanding other people, you understand, it's like this echo chamber of feedback to understand yourself more. So it's just endlessly fascinating. I mean, we were in a, a car trip with each other that was like a, one way five hour trip and all, like more than half the time we're talking about personality yeah. traits you, you can talk you can spend hours and hours analyzing different people's personalities yeah yeah and it's interesting because you can go further down the rabbit hole and be like well this is what i see in this person but compared to this other personality this person seems more like this it's interesting when you look at it in, in terms of relativity between different personalities yep. very fascinating fascinating uh let's play a game Let's do it. Let's play a game, and I think I'm going to horribly regret this, about a, a, exercising your external uh, feeling, <laughs> your extroverted feeling, mm -hmm. uh, by sharing your thoughts on things. <laughs> okay. That sounds fun. Uh, I just realized this. I'm like, okay, but well, you realize, I had a taste realize, of this yesterday. Realize that on ISTP, like, I need processing time. Like, I'm not just going to, I'm not a good person. You know how sometimes you, you to yeah. get, to start a project, you get in a group and yeah, you start spitballing? I don't want to be a part of that. Like, once you have, like, your two main ideas, then bring me in, and then I'll, I'll get to work and, and bring things together and make things make sense. But, but you want me to put me on the spot that's and what, just see what's... That's still part of, a, that's still part of what an extrovert has to do. Oh, they point. just, oh, they're just putting it out there. I see. There's different it. levels of it. So there's certain, I'm not going to ask you super deep. To, if I had more. My introverted thinking to extroverted feeling. Uh, I'm going to make so entertainment silly. out of it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to ask you like how to, how, how are you going to create world peace? That's good. That's, that's a very deep. Well, that's going to be superficial things. Let's just all speak the same language. That'll solve it. Let's speak the same language. Yeah, one language. What do you mean? For all. Oh, for one for, universal. For, oh, you're talking about uh, world peace. Yeah, that's, yeah. One universal language, one universal culture, one that's it. universe. World, world peace, uh, world order. I was gonna say that sounds like a brave new world. That sounds like <laughs> that sounds like a dystopian future in some on some level. Hmm. I haven't thought of it. That's why. Uh, but I totally get what you mean. I I totally get like on a theoretical level. When was the last time I it annoyed you? Or did something annoying, even if it's mildly so, even for a second. You don't annoy me. What? You At don't. all? You don't. Get out of here! That's, That's not possible. Amazing. You just don't. You don't annoy me. You don't. I mean, you don't do that. Any annoying things? Oh. Like that would annoy me. You're Weird. introverted. I like introverted. Okay. Like I'm comfortable. Like you know how you say you're awkward. I'm comfortable around awkward. I like. I'm very like awkward. It. Yeah, yes. I like it. But I think there's a charm in my awkwardness. It makes me feel comfortable. It's because I'm not trying to hide it anymore. I think a lot of awkward people become more awkward when they're trying not to be awkward. And by trying not to be awkward and not just embracing the, the weird, they You do weird. embrace your awkward. I do. I do. Yeah. I'll usually do something weird and then I'll turn to you and go... <laughs> and I appreciate that. Because I know. Because that's how I feel inside. Because I know. I know. I know. That was, that was a little strange. <laughs> I know that was a little off-putting or a little off-beat. Oh, okay, well, maybe not annoying, but when's the last time you, I did or said something that you were like, that's actually genuinely weird? I'm sure you've had those moments. I haven't. Really? I mean, I, again, I'd have to think about it because I do have an amazing memory bank. I would be able to, if, you know, if I tried. All right. But I, nothing is coming to head to my head of anything 
okay. that you said to me that would make me feel that way. All right. Then I'd be like, whoa, that's actually weird. No, I've never had that thought. All right, maybe with, maybe I'm just not a good uh, litmus test for this. Maybe of my sex then, maybe of women in general. Women in general. Yes. <laughs> what is something that women do Here's or the, say that you find perplexing. And this is obviously, this is not all women, but in general. The, here's in general, the least tolerance I would have for behavior in anybody, but more so in women, I feel, because I feel like they should know better. Is, <laughs> Fair, let's start. Okay. And I, this is a safe space, I won't judge you, right. and people in the comments, comments don't get away. upset. I'm you, good. You don't, don't get upset, <laughs> per se, but you definitely feel free to challenge him, but this, just keep bear in mind that this is an exercise. If a woman is expressing mean thoughts about her friends or even herself. Like gossiping. Gossiping, just her, her assertive stance over like dumb people or something like that. I can't stand that about anybody. Guys, it's not that I'll tolerate it. I wouldn't be really friends with a guy like that either. Right. You know, but those you are, feel those like are, in, in the groups that you have migrated through you see that more predominantly that is a trait that i've been that i've noticed blatantly and that i've mm. purposefully escaped from before i was a conscious being like i would be turned off by something like that i see and what do you love about women that tends to be unique to women uh it tends to be unique to i like sweet women sweet sweet what's sweet to you Sweet, just uh, caring, uh, what's it called? When you anticipate, you anticipate, you understand yeah. what's happening around you. But I care, I like sweet men too. Like I want to surround, I feel like people in our tribe are sweet as fuck. Like we're really sweet. <laughs> Myself, we I feel sweet. I'm sweet. Yeah. Like I want to, yeah. we want to be. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet people. I see. Very nice. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get an opinion. From you that may not be popular. Okay. Um, I have a lot of those. <laughs> help me out here. Um, I mean, one thing that is insensitive that I noticed recently is the way I express my thoughts about spirituality. Uh, like the way I, I refer to God and the devil, the way I refer to consciousness and AI. Like it's very just, I didn't realize that some people might take that offensively and even so even i may have but now that i, I see it I, I see like some people could take that the wrong way my thought about it before was well good like if they don't like it good like that way they can get away from me and the people that do like it can come closer to me that was the way i looked at it before and it's still overall the way i feel about it uh however now i mean i notice like now what i want to do with it is like for instance if this is why the personality thing is important to me. Like, if I understand, if I know you, and I know that you, you would be, you would be. I know your personality. I'm kind of getting to know you. Then I wouldn't say something so forceful, or mm -hmm. I wouldn't purposefully say something to offend you. No matter how cool I think it is, right? I want to communicate with with that person. I want to say the word because there's there's ways of saying everything. Yes. So I want to learn to communicate. So I'm more. IT about things, TI about it, right? I could be more, you know, feeler. I could be more introverted. I could, or, or intuitive, I mean, uh, and communicate the same thing, but I could romanticize it for them. I can say the words that would make them feel less offense to what I'm trying to say. Even though it could still be shocking, I could soften the blow. I could be more compassionate in that sense. And so I do feel in these past two days, I've been extra alert about like hey i could be more compassionate here i could be more compassionate and like yesterday you, you caught called me out on it where i'm like saying i'm insensitive or i i lack sensitivity or i lack compassion i don't want to say those words anymore right they're diminishing i don't want to say i lack anything yeah but i could have more compassion i could have more and that's an abundant way of looking at it i like that i like that that's good <laughs> that we kind of went off on a tangent from the game, but I like that more. I think I think I like. Well, you needed a little help. I did. I wrapped it up a little bit. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm, I want I you to understand it. me better. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate that. But now I know where to go because you do have 
I did do this do know this about you that you have very strong feelings when it comes to discussing spirituality. Okay. <laughs> um, how do you feel about people who think about God as being this omnipotent being in a white world on a white robe and a beard? I don't think I know people like that in real life. But what would you think about that that belief system? And what do you think of that belief system? I feel it's antiquated and childlike. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you want? That's what I was like, oh yeah, that's right. He has more uh, because a lot of people have those kind of views, right? And you you probably don't associate with a lot of people like that, but. If we were to step outside our bubble here, I think yeah. a lot of people do think about it in those terms. Okay. It's child, so you think it's antiquated and childlike, which I don't necessarily disagree with. But how? how what's is a it, better way? What's of saying a good it? way of saying? But now, that's my whole point in this game is how to how do we find ways to get that point across without making someone just raise their hackles? Because the idea would be to bridge the gap of understanding, right? As opposed to putting someone off on the, at, right at the gate, mm -hmm. right? Um, let me, let's take some time to think about that. Like, what's a better way of saying that? Like, instead of saying that's antiquated and childish, maybe, so childish, let's turn that around. I think that that person tends to be raised with a very paternalistic viewpoint. Maybe, paternalistic? Like yeah, they, they tend to see like men they, they must have been raised in an environment where men are the authoritarian figures. Oh, okay. I didn't put that together. Yeah. Because why else would you consider that to be a, a male, uh, the, the, the god that figure to be a male figure, yep. right? And older. So clearly you put age as a, age as a sign of authority. So hierarchy is important to this person. Mm. See? Breaking it down yeah. <laughs> in different ways. Like it's that. still the same. But you're analyzing in a way where, like, someone who probably didn't even think about it that way would be like, "Wow, I didn't even think, I didn't even realize that." Antiquated because that's probably a belief that was passed down to them, and they just didn't question it. So it's just generations of passing down this belief and and just letting it be. And be like, that's it. <laughs> so that's where antiquated comes from. No one challenged it. No one thought for themselves and thought what was right for them. So if you said it to someone that way who had that belief system, do you think they would list, they would take better to what you said or what I said? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. What I said could have used more compassion. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what we're saying. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it, it's essentially, it's a, but what I'm saying is, what you're saying is not wrong. I essentially agree with you. I just found essentially a flowery way of saying it yeah. or just a, a way that helps people maybe understand where that comes from without yeah. making them feel like they're insulted and what's important about this this little game that you just illustrated for us is that i wouldn't if i was in front of that person i would never tell that person right you wouldn't that, that but, your child right yeah i wouldn't say what you said either i would just say nothing <laughs> I know. That's what I. But that's I would what rather, would happen. But, but I would something. keep my little thought to myself, <laughs> right? And it would stew into like I would be my real opinion, and that's how I would view the world. But I, I don't want I, to view the world like that, right? right. So you're showing me. I'm, I'm learning. I, I'm getting it. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what else, <laughs> what other times where I've noticed you have like a slightly uh, stronger reaction to it. <laughs> what else? What else gets you? What, what annoys you, just in general? You're, what I are told you, negative, negative, extroverted negative people. Extroverted negative people. Yeah, I'm loud, like obnoxious that. negative people. You tourists? Know, like sports, you know, oh, okay. Americans. Oh, I guess. <laughs> I was <laughs> going to say tourists. <laughs> yeah, I can't stand Americans. <laughs> <laughs> you mean when, when they're abroad or just in general? Like, you just, should, just like, in, just a, like, in a sports setting. In, in Europe, people get a, they have a bad rap of Americans. Yes. I understand what, what they see. Like, sure. I get it. Like, I see what they see. The obnoxious uh, American who's it's, just like, yeah. Loud. Inconsiderate. Loud. Loud. Inconsiderate. I mean, that's mean, hard for me. Mean people? Come on. Nobody. I mean, that's hard for me to spin because, like, I, I, I feel that way. <laughs> yeah. 
Because I tend to be very, uh... Because it's not, it has nothing to do with your personality. You're a beautiful, positive person. That's why we're around each other. Right. That's why this is like, you know how we're taught, like, don't stereotype people? Yeah. This is a great way to stereotype people. Like, it's not a, a, <laughs> an extroverted thing. It's an internal way of right. stereotyping people. And it's a positive way, you know, like, understanding how we work better rather than, like, I don't like the way you look. I don't like the way you dress, You you know? Yeah. How would you tell someone in a movie theater who's being loud to be quiet? Because loud. I would. <laughs> so that's okay. So let's think about this. So you wouldn't, but you would want to, right? There's part of you, or that you would want them to be quiet. You may not necessarily want to, to be the one to tell them, but you'd sure. want them to be quiet. Sure. But I also don't want somebody else to tell them to be quiet, because that's the same thing to me. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> so it's the same as that person being loud? The person who's telling them to shut up is is being just as disruptive. I feel so, yeah. Or being just as inconsiderate. So what do you do in that situation, then? I mean, if it's a continuous thing, I'll leave. So you would just leave? You wouldn't say anything? Yeah, I would. You think it's wrong for I'm someone very... in that situation then to, to, act, to turn around and be like, I'm so sorry. I, I know you're feeling a certain way, but I'm, I can't really hear what's going on in the movie. I wouldn't do that. You wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. You think that's wrong? No, I don't think it's wrong, but I feel it defeats the purpose. I'm trying to, I want quiet for the movie, and I'm trying to, and I'm going to make noise in no, order you, to attempt, but, but sometimes that, you can, and it's you not going to help. You see, that extroverted right. person is going to respond to that. They're not going to take my polite, like, hey man, um, could you keep it down? Like, they're not going to take that the right way. I think so. Well, isn't it worth trying this? So this is where I have an ideological difference for me. Okay, tell it's me. A small I have another thing. example after this. Okay. I know, but like sometimes you need to have that short term because you're adding a little bit of more noise by saying that. But you're saving yourself the rest of the movie and probably everyone else's enjoyment in the process. I don't think you should be mean about it either. Be like, hey, mother effer over there. <laughs> I can't hear anything. You're not in the movie, so shut the F up. Like that's probably not the right way of saying it. But be like, hey. Hey, extroverted feeler over there. <laughs> <laughs> extroverted feeler. I know that you're just being your, your personality from the Myers-Briggs test. <laughs> but, but this introverted feeler over here. How would you feel if you... Can't hear what's being conveyed on the screen. If you got food from the waiter and it wasn't the food you ordered. See, this is a good... See, this, these are minor situations, right? In the larger scheme of things, they don't really matter. But these are good exercises. Yeah. It's about... It's, it's about, it's not the point, you know, the, the point about this is, I would say something, because it was likely a mistake. Like, let's say your food was undercooked or was the, the wrong order, whatever. I would just tell the waiter, be like, excuse me, I ordered this thing, and this thing came out something completely different, or it's missing this, can we have that, can we have the kitchen add that, please? They'd be, and they'd actually, they're paid to do that, that's their job. Their job, if they're not telling them how to do their job correctly, um, then that may cause an issue down the line of them being negligent or the kitchen. If it's not the waiter, it's the ki like someone in the kitchen. Someone's not doing their job. You're just reminding them politely. That's what they're paid to do, right? Yeah. You're not helping them reach their, you know, reach their higher purpose in that function. I don't think that's rude at all. Yeah, I think I it is rude to like, um, what the hell is this? Yeah. This is not what I ordered. Oh, yeah. You better send us back or I'm gonna take it off your tip. Like no one wants to deal with that person. As young people call it, the Karen. You know? The like Karen? <laughs> yeah, Karen. Karen is like what young people nowadays would say. Well, not even young, but just in slang. But a Karen is a person who's just complaining about everything, but in a really oh. mean, kind of entitled way. I see. Yeah. Right? And just kind of using that to, in a way, threaten everyone to get their way. But I didn't see anything wrong with it. So you would just be like, oh, I'll just eat it. If it's something c pretty close to what I ordered, like if they forgot, if they forgot something that they like a side of something, I would ask for it. Yeah. But, okay. So there you okay. go. Okay. But if it's if it's them, like they got something completely wrong, I wouldn't necessarily. I would just eat it. What like, do you mean completely wrong? Like if say I ordered a chicken burrito and they brought out a carne asada burrito, I would just eat the burrito. You know. I'm not like, you know, because you don't mind too much, but it depends. Right. It de it de Let's just say like I, I don't. Eat, I don't. And it also it. depends on the type of restaurant. If it's like a low scale restaurant, I'll never send food back. Really? Because, oh, I've seen movies. I've seen documentaries. 
Oh, and what people do. Yeah, that's that's my main concern. Is like I don't want like some disgruntled. But I think that's only when you're being mean to them. So I think part of the you know, I feel I don't know how they feel inside. Like I don't know the bad day they had. I'm very. I feel like uh, this is probably not a good stereotype, but to make. But I feel in general, waiters are not content. I think and it's because they dealt with so many mean people. Sure. I don't think, I don't like to assume the worst of people. Sure. This is a good dialogue that we're having. Yeah, I like because that. I feel like they want, they're in a, a service job, A, probably because they need to, but B, like I also think they, everyone derives some kind of self-worth from what they're doing on some level. They want to be proud of what they're doing. They want to do it well, regardless of what they're doing. It's just that they dealt with so many rude and titled people over the course of the day. Yeah. That yeah, they would they would just start they would start in turn getting a negative view of people. If I'm maintaining a negative view of people, that's going to be reflected in someone else. Yeah. If you really believe in the whole whole form, what's both in me is in you. So you thinking that is going to create that in someone else. Yeah. So by just I'm showing them, right? you're projecting. <laughs> so if you're showing them like, hey, I totally appreciate what you do, but like I don't like let's say in that carne asada chicken example, I don't eat red meat. So if they sent it to me, I'd be like, oh, hey, yeah. I'm, I, this is probably a small mistake, but I did order a chicken. Is that okay if I get that replaced? Yeah. Really appreciate it. Give me a sweet smile. <laughs> because you know, I that's naturally what comes to me. I don't want to create you know, a, a conflict, or... conflict or a bad taste, but I also deserve what I ordered. Dude, that's also a self-worth thing. I deserve I think to get so what too. Yeah, absolutely. So, and I, most people, when I do that, and I'm really like that, I don't do it all the time, but if it's really like that off, I'll be like, yeah. And then they're like, oh yeah, no, I'm so sorry. I'm like, thank you. You know, I'm really appreciative. Sorry to cause you more, like, sorry to take more time. Because I know that they're busy. But if you do it in a nice way, most people are more than happy to comply. Absolutely. Yeah, and I don't take it off their tip. Like, I, I've had bad days, I've made mistakes, I totally allow other people to make mistakes. I'm a good tipper. I tip good no matter what. Yeah. I'm only a, I only take it off, honestly, if people are rude. Mm -hmm. Not if they get it wrong, but if they're rude. That's different. That's probably still a self-worth issue for me, huh? <laughs> still tipping them well, even if they're rude. Yeah. yeah, you need to tell them. Yeah. In a way, like, okay, that wasn't good. That was really, that was really wrong. That's only happened like maybe once in my life. But if it's been a mistake, I don't like. I know some people just be like, ah, take it off. They they got this wrong. But like honestly, people are not people are imperfect. I would hate for someone to to judge me on my worst day. Mm -hmm. That's not fair. Yeah, I do feel for that. I do feel like waiters, police officers, they see more often the worst of people. They do. And that's why I'm like, man, that job sucks. You know, it's like, <laughs> I would not want. But they went in with the best intention. They want yeah. servers. They want to serve. They want to create a great environment for people. In addition to that's the job that was available, I get that, or that's the job that fits their hours. Sure. But I believe most people come in with an intention of doing a good job. Most people. Most people. Yeah, I can't speak for everyone. Some people just don't give any Fs and like just want to get out of there and don't care. Those are the people probably would get their pay their their tip off, you know. Yeah. But that's why that's that exists. Um, and police officers, I mean. Quite sure from the ones that I know, they went in wanting to do good. They wanted to protect. They wanted to serve the public. Unfortunately, what they don't quite realize going into it is that they're protecting and serving people from other people who are causing trouble. <laughs> so they see the they see the worst. They tend to to hone in on the worst of humanity and lose and tend to lose sight of those who are who are truly in need. Yeah, you know. Anyway, good exercise. See? It was a good exercise. <laughs> I like this game. This I is, could do this game. This is why I was like, okay, well, let's say what scene, what instances yeah. would I have you a know judgment? What, what's great about us, like our personalities and our friendship, like I saw another example on YouTube earlier, like an, uh, an INFP and an ISTP having a conversation. And they, it's not like we communicate. You what? see, it was trying to show an example of the weakest points of these of these people, <laughs> right? Yeah. But you see, we're strong in our relationship, our bond. You know, like you're actually trying to help me figure things out. You're not just like 
I can tell that you're slightly bothered by what I'm saying, but you're you're also <laughs> you're also I'm trying my best. Also, I'm, I'm trying my best not to be just completely. I get it. I collect the subtle data too. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we're working on something yeah, on purpose, right? Yeah. We have we have we have that drive to work with each other. Yeah. It's there's a flow. There's there's there is, you know, a flow to our conversation and our relationship and our chemistry that we have right there's like a there's a real genuine bond between us that's why i'm not like i like i said i am immediately sorry if i at all offended anybody but i'm also i would say it again you know like i would would say it again because i'm learning so much i get that and i totally understand that and i'm like you know what i can't fault you for trying i cannot i cannot fault you for that i respect it and I know, I, and I know what your heart is. I trust in your intention. You do trust. I know you do. I definitely trust, and and it's you know, trust is one of those things that you just have to give first in yeah. order to receive. Yeah. That's the that's the paradox of trust. If you want someone to trust you, you have to trust them. Yeah. Isn't that weird? It's super weird, right? <laughs> you know what's strange? Recently, since trust has come up, I've been thinking about it, and I realized that for me, and it also fits my personality, is I trust easy. I want to trust, and it actually it sets me up to be taken advantage of. Uh, I'm more susceptible to people, you know, messing with me or taking taking me for granted, whatever. But at the same time, I want to trust. Like, and I get, and I, and I also see this like uh, in our friend Peter. Like, we want to trust people. That's why it's important when we have blind spots to surround with ourselves with friends who see our blind spots and be like, look, like this person could potentially be taking advantage yeah. of you. Yeah. It's what it's how I express love, and I know it's an unpopular thing. No one likes, yeah, well, especially like it. using uh, Peter as an example, who's my brother-in-law. Um, he's a very trusty. Like, I think he's learned over time to be a little bit more, more cautious. But he has a very big heart, and he, his his first instinct is to trust most, like trust people who, you know, say all the right things and seem to be doing all the right things, right? Um, the thing about Peter is because he's such a a great personality, people tend to put the, their best foot forward around him. Sure. But the people around him, they may see a different side of that person. Right. Because that person lets down, like, lets down that guard. Because you can't keep up the act. You can't keep up time. the act forever, right? And so sometimes people around Peter would tell him, like, hey, just to put you on your guard. You're not even the, than this person, the, the, the bad news bear, the, the bear of bad news. Like, I just watch out for this. And I know that may not always be taken the, the right way. He could be like, no, no, you don't get it. This person is, and I, and I understand that's why he views that way because he, in his mind, if I were him, I would, I would see it that way too, you know? But I think over time he's, he's seen that play out. Sure. Out in the long run. Um, but I think it's important to not surround yourself with yes men. Um, they don't have your best interest in mind. They're just trying to be in your good graces. It's a very different, it's a very different motivation, right? Um, and trust, like, trust that I tell you these things is not for any reason of my own, but just because I care about you. <laughs> but you will do with that, like, I'm not attached as well. I've learned not to be, I used to be attached to be like, why don't you believe me? <laughs> you know, and I think that's not right either. Yeah. Like, you can't take it personally. You have to mm-hmm. be like, you know, I'm going to tell you this because I care, but ultimately you do with this what you will. Like if you if you decide to go ahead with it, okay, that's that's cool. Hopefully I'm wrong. I hope that I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, and but I won't take it personally if you decide to not take my advice or if you decide to disregard ultimately what I say. Mm-hmm. Or at the very least, don't disregard it. Just keep it in the back of your mind, but still trust but verify. Yeah. You hear that a lot. Trust but verify. I I would prefer that. And hopefully I'm wrong. And that's one of those things, like, if, if you understand that person's intention, you just have to trust that intention more so than whether or not you're right, he's right, she's right, they're wrong, et cetera, et cetera. Because when it's something like that, it's hard to get to the core truth of it. Different people are going to see different things. Unless you're in the, all in the same room together, when all when every deal is going down and when every conversation is happening, it's just just not a feasible thing in most times. You know, everyone's going to have a different version of their truth. 
just gotta trust. You just gotta trust that whatever happens is meant to happen. Yeah. Well, I do trust that, and I do. I think it's a perceiving, a perceiving thing. Like we we lack that, or you know, we're not a good judge of characters. Mm -hmm. I guess is like that's what it. You know, you can be over judgmental, which can affect you. Like you put the example of, and then when you don't have that that judgment so strong, then you people take advantage of you. So it's a great lesson to learn. So if I have to be taken advantage of to learn that lesson. Let that or happen. Let that happen. Exactly. Let it happen. And it's learn it's from meant it. to be. Exactly. Yeah, maybe they have to be taken advantage of for them to be like, okay, I can. Yeah. I the can thing is, like, are you going to continue to be the same thing happen? That's when we get stuck in the loop. You continue to attract these people to you. And you yeah. continue to play out the same story over and over. Right. Is that the story you want? Like, this is when you have to like wake up to yourself. Like, what am I really doing here? And then you're ignoring your friends that are trying to warn you, right? Like, and you're pushing them away. So what are you doing with your story? You're attracting exactly what you don't like about yourself. Yep, exactly. This is what the, the world is fascinating to me. The world, the, the stories we write for ourselves are endlessly entertaining. It may not seem like that in the be in when you're in it, but when you take a step back, you're like, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it is hilarious. Funny. All right, well, next time I'll come up with more scenarios of okay. what would, instead of WWJD, what would Jesus do? It would be, what would Jay do? Right. I like it. I like this game, because then we can, we can talk it's it out. It's definitely more. different than what Jesus would say, for sure. Jesus was an INFP. They have given him a personality profile. You think it was an I? No. I don't know, someone who goes and preaches out, I don't think that's an I, I think that's an E. You can still be intuitive, though. E N. I I believe Jesus was very intuitive. Maybe. No, for sure he was intuitive. But yeah. I or E, that's, I'm not sure. We weren't. No, we can only speculate, right? But based on what I've read, people who I would, go out there and basically give lectures and teachings and are around or surround are making visitations to people. That's an E, bro. That's a big E. I, overall, I would say you're you're probably right. At the same time, I would think that like he's compelled to do this like he's doing it for the greater good not because he's extroverted and he wants to get his message out there he's more an internal person and i would say if i knew him personally i would ask him where do you get your energy from do you get your energy from going out to the crowd or do you get your energy when you get back to your cave and recharge and i would probably guess uh probably back in the cave yeah he would recharge yeah he would recharge <laughs> he's just he's just a very well-developed eye then yeah, very well done. So There's wait, a balance. You said he's an INFP. P? Also Hitler. Am I like a Jesus? I'm a Jesus and a Hitler? Yes. I totally see it. You see how I, you see, how I see things? <laughs> uh, you know what? That sounds right for me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm charismatic. <laughs> uh, Hitler was considered charismatic. Both have dark hair. Um, both give rousing, <laughs> rousing speeches. Yeah, if I didn't if I didn't wax hair, I'd probably start getting a little mustache. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Um, we're not. I'm not as prejudiced though as as Hitler. Sure. Is uh, but his more positive traits. Sure. He was an artist. He was an art. Yeah, he was a creative person. Yep. That's true. I am a creative person. You see, you can still relate to people even in a very far side of the ideological spectrum from you. So, Absolutely. Yeah. I think a lot of like uh, historical figures tend to be, fall, probably fall into that personality type, right? The INFPs. Um, I wonder. That would be good research to see. Well, Gandhi? Gandhi was also INFP. Mm, see? Basically. I just learned this today. Because INFPs are idealistic. We, we, we saw that in the video too. They, they're very passionate about certain ideals. And so they're very, even if they're inherently like introverted, they're so passionate that they'll yeah. go out there. And you even said it earlier. Things. Like sometimes you're just compelled to do it. I am just compelled. Like, oh, I'm gonna just do it. Yeah. I'm just, even though no one's forcing me, I'm compelling myself to do it. I, I, there's this force inside of me that says, you need to do this mm -hmm. thing. And even though I'm like, I don't want to, yeah. but at the same time, I'm not stopping myself <laughs> yeah it's something it feels like something greater than you is making you do this thing mm -hmm. and to deny it feels like denying nature like telling the I rain agree. telling the rain not to fall and, and telling the sunshine not to be warm it doesn't feel right yeah 
I agree. Yeah, it, it feels like this, these personality traits, how they relate to us, it feels to me like if I want to romanticize a story is like my highest self planted this seed in me. Like it's the presets of this machine. Mm -hmm. And these presets, like for the most part, I'm, except in you know traumatic things that send my story in another direction, make me mean or whatever. But for the most part, I will act upon this preset. And I like it because it feels like I did it to myself rather than, you know, it's not a society thing. It's like I'm self-motivated. I'm self-inspired, self-created. It's it's very empowering thought. You are your own muse. <laughs> you are both the, the artist and the muse. Mm. That's beautiful. 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 So much beauty. <laughs> <laughs> so much <beauty>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think this is a good place. Beep. Great job. Just to edit. <laughs> Beep. Great job. Awesome. I'm sure Casey. I'm sure Casey would enjoy this one. He would. Doesn't he like talking endlessly ad nauseum about about personality traits? Yeah, he he likes it. He doesn't like things. He doesn't like when I point things out in his personality. Though <laughs> it's like oh. I didn't expect this to backfire on me. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Okay. I need to hear this now. What did he point out to him? Because uh, I well, can point out plenty. Remember he mentioned in the show car. this part. Show this part to Casey too. Yeah. Sure. Fuck you, Casey. All right. Back on. We're back on. Uh, <laughs> no, he, he, when we went on that road trip, he sh he shared like how he feels, like the the way I address things. Like I, I brought it up, like the way I speak about you know spirituality, but it doesn't sit well with his intuitive side. Really? Yeah, he said that. He's he didn't hear you didn't, he said it very subtly. Uh, and I was like, Well I don't I don't mean to do that, right? Remember I said, Yes I do remember this. Yeah. yeah. And, did he elaborate uh, more on that? Though? He did later, okay. like uh, the day before he left he elaborated more like and he explained why it's conflicting to him, like as far as like he likes the intuitive likes the romantic God story. And so when I simplify things so much and and make it so machine like he doesn't like it. It conflicts with with him somehow. He is romantic. Yeah, and so which and, is weird. <laughs> like I wouldn't. That's not the word that would come to mind when describing right? Casey. Sorry, Casey. But he, but it is. But he is. I would actually say he does romanticize things. Yeah. Motherfucker wants to live in a castle. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> How romantic is that? How fucking romantic is that? None of this is making it on YouTube, but I just want you to show this part, Casey. Yeah. Uh, and so and and I even. Because I just asked questions, so my only question to that was like, is that an empowering thought? And he initially said no, he just said, he recognizes it. He's like, no, it's not an empowering thought. Oh, at least he's aware. Yeah, he is aware. He is so he's aware. aware. Yeah. He does know. He started saying things like, I know, like when I asked him what time he's coming over, he was like, I don't know. Like, am I doing this? And it's hard just for me to say, I know, I know it's very difficult. Before, he would just be like, whatever, jungle time. Yeah, <laughs> like, jungle time. But now he's actually being more self-aware. Like, I know it's difficult accommodating someone yeah. like me. Now, eventually, I hope to get him to a point where he's just like, you know what? I am going to commit to a time. <laughs> but that's progress. progress. I can't even necessarily get mad at it because it is progress. It's progress from what he was before. You're very understanding, Angela. You're very understanding. To a fucking fault. Yeah. <laughs> Your preset to a fucking is fault. understanding. I do know that I need to work on this. <laughs> it's not. It hasn't helped me for a long time because I was so accommodated. In a way, it's enabling. Mm. In a way, I know I've enabled people and their bad habits being like, it's okay to do this. I am here. I am patient. But I have allowed people to go on in a way that doesn't help them. Certainly doesn't help me. And and very much so does not help other people. So I'm trying to fix that in myself. Not letting bad habits go unchecked. I did that for a long time, mm -hmm. being too understanding, being too open. There is such a thing. Nothing is, is, is inherently good or bad, but in a certain situation, something can become, something that's normally good can become bad. Yeah. Uh, when we start depending on certain personalities as a crutch, like leaning toward them, yeah. that's when they start negatively affecting us. Yeah. That's why it's important for us to understand and balance out. Only we could do it. Nobody else is going to do it for us. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm still I'm still learning how to be both open to people, but at the same time provide better guidelines. Yeah. 
I don't want to be hard in terms of telling them that they're who to be, but at the same time, I need to show like, okay, you can choose this, but I need to draw better boundaries too. Like I'm not, you know, you do your thing if you want to do that, but I can't have that in my life because of this and this and this reason. I need, I become better at saying, saying things like that. Yeah. Something I still struggle with, honestly. Mm. Yeah. Being understanding, it's like, um, have you seen, like, have you learned about gene keys? No. Oh, well, there's like gene keys, right? Uh, it's basically like a different way of showing. Uh, like, it, it, I think it takes like your birthday, where you where you were born, and the time and date you were born, and it, it's the system that kind of explains why your personality is a certain way, or like why you may how open you are to things, or how closed you are to them. It's like just just another modality to evaluate your personality. Right, but on a more spiritual level, and it showed that at the crown, at crown, I don't want to say chakra, but essentially where your crown chakra would be, mine is considered very open. Most of my areas that they evaluate are open, which means that I can kind of be open in different ways of, of thinking and feeling. Right, the, and most like there's seven, I think there's seven areas that are evaluated. I think five of mine, five or six of mine are open, which is rare. Um, but that also means that I tend to not have my own ideas. I just tend to like, op like, just be open to hearing what yours is, <laughs> are, which makes me both flexible. But at the same time, if I'm not disciplined enough, I can get washed away in people's tides very quickly. Mm. So yeah, you should read after you're like exhausted with the with the Myers Briggs. Okay. Hung was really into that. Hung and Kimberly. To what? The Gene Keys. Oh okay. Yeah. Just another one. It's just another way of understanding. Mm. 